My name is Jenna. This is 1111 with Jenna. I'm here seven days, seven nights, 14 times a week. It's true. Every day at 1111 11 a.m. and every night at 1111 11 p.m. Eastern time. So wherever I am, I do it according to Eastern time because it just works out that way. And it makes it early on the, on the West Coast, even earlier if I'm you know, if I ever just decide to pop over to Maui for a moment. Hey, did I see William D here for a minute? Let me go public super fast, editing the privacy, going public, ba bam, done. Now, everybody, everybody can see this show tonight because this is going to be a fun show. I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't know how short it's going to be, but it's going to be a show. And it's going to happen because I invited him <laughs> and he said yes. Uh, I'm still super excited about three years on Thursday and how cool it was that everybody was there. And if you were on the show, thank you. And if you watched the show, thank you very much. And if you've watched this morning's show with Gay, I, I just, there's just some things where I just go, you know what, I just want to post something today. And because I was working today with my sister, Lisa and I were working outside. We had fun. Grace and I worked inside. I worked on a collage that I have that I'm it's going to be for sale at the show. I'm, I'm taking it to the show. What show? Show. I have a show on Saturday. Well, I have a show next week too. Saturday, April, April 1st at the um, Broadway Grill in Burlingame, California. And the following Saturday, I am going to be in Sonoma at the Sebastiani Theater. What's up? I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. But there's so many things to be. Hey, William D. Emily Clee. What up, girl? Eric. Hi there. Hi there. There's people here. There's some people here. Thank you. Yeah, worth sharing. Every show's worth sharing. Speaking of, let me just post that really quickly. I gotta do my little spiel. I need to get I need to get my guest to do a couple of um little, you know, things like this. Like Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's all about the love and the sharing and the likes. And if you love it, share the show. A generous gift is much appreciated. Venmo at Jenna Mamina, PayPal.me slash Jenna Sings, Patreon.me slash, no, Patreon.com slash Jenna Mamina, and I have Zell. You would think that I would have this memorized by now, but I forget about it anyway. And it, but anyway. So I'm going to post it right here, right here, right now. Tell your friends, tell them to come check out the show. It's groovy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Sunday. It's Sunday night. What is it? Sunday night shoe stories. And tonight's shoe stories, I think, are even going to include some ties, maybe? I'll tell you what. Maybe he'll remember. I don't even know. But here we go. Gordy Young in the house. Come on, Gordy. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Ah. We'll just have to try it again. That's what's so cool about this. I don't have a director or producer or anybody going, bring it in. Don't just... I don't know what they're doing. Go, Gordy. Come on, Gordy. You can do it. You can do it if you want to. He'll, he'll be here. I mean, he's the master at this. He has had his own, he's had his own show multiple times. Let's try this again. Let me, let me turn it up a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen. Gordy Young. Next 
connecting, he's connecting. Oh no. Hmm. Let me think. We could do something different. We could go live on Facebook. You want to do that, Gordy? You guys, if you don't mind, I think I will invite him to go live. Let's see if he'll if he if he can see that. I will do this really quickly. Um, I'll try another one. Let's see. I'm going to go live on another show. Remember how we've done this in the past? Okay. Let's see. I might put this over here. Hi. I know. Oh, we're going to try this one more time. Okay. I'll do the music just in case. Gordy Young. There he is. Am I on yet? Hey, made it. Yep, yep. <laughs> Hi, Jenna. Hi, Hi everybody. How are you? You know, everything was working great. It was. Five minutes before. It was. You signed on here, and then as soon as it happens, it I, I lost everything. Happened. <laughs> Something happened on this set. I pushed the wrong button, so it's good to see so, you. Nice to see you too. What's going on? Well, I didn't know that you had shoe night on Sunday nights. I, I mean, you mentioned that uh, earlier, or, or whenever I talked to you or texted you, Sunday I do have Sunday. I do have some shoes, but it, it's something you do every Sunday. Well, we Sunday nights have been a lot of different things. It's been fun. I like it. I like Sunday nights. Yeah. Um, it's been art night where we did drawing. We did Sunday night, uh, Sunday music square. What was that, William? Sunday night music square. I can't remember. We've done a number of things on Sunday nights, but I like the shoe story. It's good. It works. Well, I'm here in Baraboo, Wisconsin. I have a bunch of shoes. I also brought some ties. If you want to look at some ties, tie tie. Baraboo. Where? Baraboo, Wisconsin. Is Baraboo? Baraboo is if you know where Madison, Wisconsin is. I like South the ice cream in Madison. Okay. If you go north of Madison, about 45 minutes, that's where Baraboo is. It's home of Devil's Lake. State Park, which has got about a hundred thousand acres of beautiful wilderness wooded, uh, but they also have campgrounds and they have horses and they have a beautiful fresh lake, beach, everything. So that's just a few miles away from me. And is Lamb's Farm near you? I that doesn't ring a bell. What the other thing that does that will probably ring a bell and some of your listeners or viewers uh i'm about eight miles from wisconsin dells oh, so if you know where the dells is yeah. that's eight miles north of me so okay. yeah and and why baraboo wisconsin uh good question this is actually where i started my so-called radio career uh broke into broadcasting in 1978 in wisconsin dells at a little tiny radio station uh, that is still on the air, by the way. And uh, and from there, I worked for a few years and then made my way to Madison and worked at a few more radio stations, got into TV in Madison, hosting a kids club. And then, really, yeah, and then uh, got into doing TV weather just really by almost by accident. And... Uh, did it here in Mad you know, in Madison for, I don't know, three or four years before I got the job in South Bend, Indiana. And I was there for 16 years at WNDU on the morning show with Trisha Sloma. And then uh, after I left there in 2010, I started uh, with WNIT, which was Experience Michiana. And I was hosting and, and helping to produce that and created that show. Uh, that show is still on the air, um, and I did that show for three and a half, four years, something like that, and then moved here in 2015. So you asked why Baraboo? Why did I come back here? Uh, my daughter moved here 
before I did. She got married, has a couple of kids. Uh, both the kids are on the. Grandpa. I'm Grandpa Gordy. Uh, both the kids are on the spectrum of autism. One of them is also deaf, so a double uh, whammy, uh, you know, uh, special needs. And uh, I felt uh, the need to eventually get back up here and help out a little bit. And because, uh, you know, when you have special needs kids, nothing really prepares parents, I don't think, to have special needs kids. And so everybody learns on their own how to deal with it. And I've tried to help out when I can in that and, regard. So and do you spend a lot of time with them? I do. Yeah. They live, uh, you know, a couple of miles away. And uh, so I see them a couple times a week. Wow. More or less. So yeah, that's why I moved back to Baraboo. And that was six years ago. And that's I love it. Up here. I think Baraboo is cool. Barabu. It's very cool. Lots of hills and valleys, lots of you know river and pe people are outdoors people up here. Are, and you, it's nice. are you an outdoor guy? Well, you know, I, I, I yes and no. Hunting? I'm not, a, I, I don't go hunting or fishing, but I uh, like a little bit of kayaking once in a while or canoeing and uh, bike riding and that kind of thing. So yeah, in that regard. Yeah. So, so Jenna, I, I have a question for you. I, I remember meeting you, uh, and it was, do you remember, it was at the Elkhart Jazz Festival? Mm -hmm. I remember, the first time I played there. Well, what year do you think that was? Because I have no idea. <laughs> I can't, I can't do the math, but I remember you were playing in a small club, and oh, I was. The very first time I played there, it was at a restaurant. Yes. It, it was a, a woman's name. And we actually, my brother tried to get me into the festival and they didn't have any room. Mm -hmm. but he was friends with this woman that owned the restaurant. And she said, why don't you just have her play here while the festival is going on? So it was on a Saturday night. That was in the, in the nineties and, and, and okay. maybe, maybe 2001. 99 2001 it was around around my first record under the influence yeah i think it was in 99 somewhere around there but i just remember walking by this club and the door was open and i could hear this voice the first thing i heard was your voice was clear as a bell and i said wow and i went in there and you were there i think with rolf I think it was actually andre bush okay <laughs> you have better memory than i do but uh he had a very odd guitar because I play yeah. guitar and I'd never seen a guitar like he had. He had a guitar that was, it was um, a, called a Klein. It was a black Klein guitar without a headstock. Okay. And he tuned it down here. So there's no tuning up here. There are no, no uh, keys. What are these called? The tuning? Tuning pegs. Or, the pegs. There are no yeah. pegs. The pegs are actually on yeah. the body of the guitar. Rolf also plays uh, a Klein and something else similar to that but yeah that was that was andre that's the then, one thing you would say i i play with guy i play with the guy that plays seven string without a headstock and yeah well the and the other thing about that guitar if if we're talking about the same yeah. guitarist mm -hmm. the frets were splayed oh that was robin okay that and was, i oh, never wow, that, was, I, that wasn't rolf that was robin and okay. the, the frets are, are they're splayed and there's even lights on each fret so that when we play in in dark clubs, yeah, that's all. That was um, done by. I'll think of it. In okay. Well, it was very, very. It was very, very cool. And yeah, uh, and, and you were. Uh, I mean, I, Ralph I, I, Novaks is the guitar builder. Is a luthier. Ralph, oh, okay. Ralph Novaks. Mm -hmm. But your voice captured me right away, and I said, "I this is great," and I. And I think I came up to you during a break after the set. I, at least that's my memory and introduced myself. And I just, I, I, I never heard a voice like yours. And I thought it was beautiful. I don't remember if I invited you. I know you were on Experience Michiana at least once, maybe twice. I don't know. But I don't remember you actually singing on the show. Or maybe we had a tape of you singing or something. I, I, you were there for a different reason, weren't you? I think I was there because I was, I, I believe it was, well, I'll tell you one thing about it. I wore this jacket. Oh, really? Okay. Because yeah. I had just gotten the jacket 
And I said to my dad, I go, I don't know what I'm going to wear. He goes, you should wear this jacket. And so tonight when I was getting ready, I had a black sweater on and I go, oh, I'm going to put on this jacket. I love this jacket. But um, I like, I'm, I'm into clothes and I like shoes and, yeah. but I was on because I believe it was for the Elkhart. I, I was just on the show, but one of the things we were talking about was the Elkhart Jazz Festival. Okay. WPE, no, the WVPE Jazz Festival. Okay. All right. And I do remember meeting your dad. Yes. He was there. Yes. And you had on a Jerry tie. A Jerry tie. A grateful Dead. You had a Jerry Garcia tie on. I have two Jerry Garcia ties. Maybe it was one of these. It was one of those. <laughs> Unless you got got rid of them and got new ones. No, these are the only two I think I've had. I, now, I don't know. The camera may not be able to pick these up, but uh, these are both Garcia ties. It was probably, well, I don't know which one. It was the red one, I think. But okay. Okay. Yeah, probably was. I think I've had that one a little longer. Are those, anyway. are those still available on YouTube or somewhere in the world? I, I, they must be. I'm sure they must be. But you know, it's funny. I, I have all these, <laughs> I have all the suits and ties that I ever had when I was in television. I never wear them anymore. I mean, I just, I have no occasion to wear them. I, you know, I don't, I, I mean, I haven't been to any weddings or funerals lately. So, you know, well, those where am I? Those are both really good ties to wear to a funeral, though. Yeah, really? Sure. Conversation pieces. I like what's happening behind you. All these cool. What's 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 happening behind yes, me? Give us a tour. All these cool, like the owls. Are those owls? Is that an owl lamp? It is. Okay. Funny, funny story. Well, I don't know if it's a funny story, but I saw that somewhere in a in an antique shop and i thought gosh this is cool and then i and then um i go out and i'm and i like to go see live music wherever it is and uh these two guys were up on stage playing somewhere and they called themselves the hoot owls the hoot owls which is a kind of an owl so I thought, well, this is great. I've got a lamp. I'm going to give it to them because they were playing blues and kind of a almost a living room setting. And so I came to one of their gigs. And after their gig, I said, hey, I got to show you guys something. And uh, so I give them this. I, I said, you know, I just thought this would be cool for you. And they were like, that's the ugliest lamp we've ever seen. <laughs> we don't want anything to do. It. I'm like, you guys are called the Hoot Owls. This will look great on stage with you. Put it on a table next to your, you know, whatever. They, they were told like, you it was the ugliest thing they'd ever seen? Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm still friends with one of them. Uh, the other one moved down to Georgia somewhere. But uh, and they were a great, great little two-person group. But they, they had no interest in, the, in it whatsoever. Cool, which, but now I, your name I, is on it. How well, you... uh, that all right. My name, that was on a one of these director chairs. Um, when I worked in television promotion and marketing, uh, back in the old days, these companies like Paramount TV and all these syndicated TV companies would send junk to the promotion directors of all the TV stations. And they sent this director's chair with Paramount movies on one side and put my name on it, which they did with everybody that was carrying their shows on a TV station to the promotion directors and to the general managers. It was just one of those schmoozy things they send to people to get their attention. Um, the director's chair eventually fell apart, but I kept, I saved the uh, my name on there and then wrapped it around a chunk of wood. And so I I use that whenever I play out and I don't play, I play at solo gigs like once every five years. I mean, I'm not an active professional musician, but, but I put nice that out there. Back there. What's that? That is a nice guitar you have back there. I have several guitars here and a couple in the other room. I have uh, six or seven guitars, a um, couple of Ibanez's, a Fender, a Guild, a Guild, which I've had for 50 years and yeah, a long time. And I have a ukulele that my mother, uh, that I inherited from my mother, which is about 70 years old. So I have a couple of collectibles, but most of these are just, uh, you know, I'm a hobbyist guitarist, but I do like to play out once in a while. 
when I was in South Bend, I got to I had the good fortune of playing with uh, Old Harve and and the Elwood Splinters Blues Band a number of times at the Midway Tavern. And oh, I love the Midway. Uh, and I played at the Jazz Festival one time with Jim Catalano, Catalano and his band. Um, Bi- what was it called? Can't remember. Vibe Nation. Is that right? No. I don't know. <laughs> you know Jim Catalano, I'm I do. sure. I yeah. do, but I, I don't remember the name. Do you know a person by the name of Maisie Harrison? That's my daughter, actually. Yeah. So Hi, Maisie. Oh, she's watching. M-E-Y-Z-I-E. Maisie. What a cool. I love that spelling. Her actual name is Megan, but she goes by Maisie. That's yeah. so cool. Hi, Maisie. And <laughs> Don, Deb Pardoon. That would be uh, my ex-wife, and uh, just, <laughs> I actually saw her today. She lives about an hour and a half away, and I went over there. She lives in a beautiful little farm out in the country, way out in the country. I mean, nice. way out in the country. You go, you know, Dad, go as you far as you can go, right now. and then keep going. You're in Northern California, Central California? I am, Lake County. What's that near? What's uh, it's near Clear Lake. It's near a, a big lake and it's near it's it's a two hours two and change north of San Francisco. OK, you take the 101 up and you turn right at Hopland and you go over this or you go. It's like you're going to Mendocino, but you turn right instead of left. OK, well, I've been to California three or four times, so I don't really know. I But I know. Um, so you're north of San Francisco. So you've had all the, are you sick of the rain and the floods and the mudslides and the power outages? No, we had two and a half feet of snow here. We were, we were snowed in. We lost a lot of trees. So today we cleaned up a lot of trees burned. We have, have to can't get rid of it all. We had snow. We lost power for four days, but we have a wood burning stove. So we made pizzas and eggs and melted snow and made hot water and made tea wow yeah but other parts of california you know have not fared as well and you know other parts of the country i mean in is in tennessee that well they had some tornadoes down south i'm not sure terrible 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 terrible. so do you no longer do you come back to the midwest at all for a while, you were living. I thought you were living up in St. Joseph area, perhaps. Born and raised in Benton Harbor. Okay. St. Joseph part time when I'm around, and um, yeah, but but here is my home, and I like being here. But and I used to tour a lot, so that's I was when I met you. I was touring 200, 250 dates a year. I know. Did and all that you, for many years, and and then. Did that all dry up with the pandemic, I assume? And are, are you back to touring at all or playing locally or? Yeah, no, yes, yes. <laughs> which it one was it going? Completely it evaporated. I mean, I was in Mexico getting ready to go on a big tour in Europe and every morning for about two weeks while I was in Mexico, it just kept yeah. three gigs canceled and then eight gigs canceled and then 20 gigs canceled and just kept going and I was there and I thought my friends are we you know the joke was what's this hand sanitizer and toilet paper thing people are freaking about in the states and we were you know here's some tequila and some (laughs) coconut oil just that's your hand sanitizer and one morning after a lot of gigs canceled I thought if I don't leave today I don't I don't know if I'm going to, who knew? Yeah. So then I went back to Michigan for a while and that's when I started this. I ended up right. getting COVID pre any kind of vaccine or anything and got very sick and was there and pressed live at 11, 11, one morning and three years and four days later, here I am. There's- and 11, 11 is kind of a magic time. Yes. I know a number of people that 1111 somehow what why is that have you ever oh, talked yeah. to other people I mean, that have that time yeah people call you know it's a divine time it's it's when you you look over at the clock and you see it it means you're you're on the right path and my brother I had a brother Nino that was also a vocalist and 
we used to see it when we were kids and we'd say 11, 11, 11, 11. And then as we grew up and we had cell phones, we would call each other and then we ended up texting each other. And it was just always a uh, time. And actually my father died on huh. Christmas a Christmas day and he died at 11, 11 um, four years I'm, ago. I'm so, so sorry to hear that, but wow. You know, it's, 11, just, 11. It's, it's a power number. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so do you, are you, uh, do you have any other kind of way to uh, make enough money to live on besides singing? I mean, are you singing as many gigs as you used to? Or, how? To, you know, because I think people forget nowadays, you don't have a, if you don't have a record company, and record companies don't hardly even exist anymore to support the artists, you got to go out and gig to make yeah. any. I mean, and that's. Unfortunately, people don't buy CDs anymore. So right. that's the other side of, that's how I made my money. Yeah. Um, I started this show and I, I make enough to keep it on the air and I'm living really small and yeah. I have gigs here and there and I, I, I make art and I sell my art and I also help people. I do um, health coaching for people and I work with it within the world of the dying and as a, a coach, I call myself a life into death coach. And so that's one of my other ways that I do. And I do organizing for people. And then in between, that's what I do in between 11, 11 AM and PM. And I take care of my mom. She's 91. That's what I do. Now that's interesting because I, I'm right now, I'm semi-retired. I'm retired, but I still work part-time at Aging and Disability Resource Center, and I'm a transportation driver for medical uh, for people that are disabled and elderly people or just disabled folks uh, in wheelchairs, just going to their regular doctor appointments or going to the clinic or whatever. And I, 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 or in a van, like a big, like a mini, people? mini van, mini van that's wheelchair accessible, one patient at a time. Just, uh, and I'll tell you, I never, I just thought of it sort of as a job job. I didn't really, I wasn't really thinking uh, about uh, what it was really like. I just thought, well, I like to drive and this seems uh, pretty, you know, like something good to do. And, but the people that I've met, uh, the disabled folks that I've met along the way are just unbelievably fascinating and they have stories to tell, you know, and it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. I never really bargained on that part of it. And I really feel like, you know, you feel good helping folks that really need the the assistance. So it's been rewarding, actually. So your daughter uh, says you did it through the entire pandemic and that you're a hero. Uh, <laughs> well, she's sweet to say that. And uh, yeah, you know, during the pandemic, people in nursing homes were stuck in nursing homes and they couldn't go to their regular appointments uh, without a lot of extra precautions being taken. And, and uh, so that was a tough time. Uh, we still were able to help them, but uh, yeah, it was, it was really, it was really something. And, uh, but now, you know, things have lifted and things are getting better and more back to normal, but a lot of those folks couldn't, couldn't make their regularly scheduled appointments because of the pandemic. And um, they couldn't see their families. They couldn't see, they couldn't right. make their doctor's appointments. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Terrible. Anyhow. Terrible. But that's why, that's why I do the show. And a lot of people that watch the show and what I like about the show is it stays on my Facebook page. If you want to share it now, you can share it on your Facebook page. Okay. And yeah. And that's how I, that's how I've created this community of incredible people that are all over the world and they watch it when they watch it. And sometimes they're here and other times, Ooh, do you like to dance? Cause we're going to dance right now. Ready? We, we are. Yep. I, I don't hear any music. Now I hear it. There's 11 people watching. Seven, 11. it go a little 
longer. There's only nine people watching now. But, but wow. for a minute there, you know, 27 seconds, there were 11 people. But there are people that I've never met that I've been on the show with for three years, two years, one year, that I've never been in the same room that I will be friends with forever. And they have also met each other online really? and outside at venues. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was in Boston. And there's a two brothers, Bill and Bo Winokur, that are musicians from Boston. And they've been fans of the show for over two and a half years. That's and fantastic. I met them in person three weeks ago. <laughs> and it was surreal because we did this for two and a half years. Sure. And then one day we had a gig together. They called me, go, you want to do a gig with us? We're You're in Boston. Come play a gig with us tomorrow. And I said, okay. And, oh. and, and I, and I was giddy getting, you know, I was in the car with my friend going, I can't believe I'm, I'm going to meet Bill and Bo Winokur. I've there. I call <laughs> them my Boston brothers. Uh -huh. And I walked in, we are on the, you know, we hugged and we were on the bandstand and 10 minutes later we were doing a gig. And two hours later we were having dinner, just pinching ourselves going, wow. can you believe we're, that, we're here together. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah it's cool. Now in all these three years, have you ever missed a show? I have. I missed one show. That's that it. I, I, I get migraines. Oh yeah. So I was in the hot in the ER, and my friend Andy was. I go, Andy, you got to do the show for me. Go for my. And I gave him my password. I'm like five seven. But then I had a couple of guest hosts. My friend Patty Loman, guest hosts. I'll call her. Go, Patty. I can't get on. You got to get, what are you doing? She's all oh, I'm in bed, but okay. I get up and they go through my show. And then I do, um, I, I have a, a regular guest. Who's my cousin Armando Ortega, who had a, a stroke and an aneurysm in hmm. April of last year. And so every Friday we were playing reruns called, we called them Mondo memories just to keep Mm -hmm. his, his energy out there and people still supporting him and his his wife and child and just putting that love out there but there's so many shows and there's so many good shows that now I'm starting to go oh, I'm gonna do a little rerun today with Patty but sure. for the most part if there's been somebody there at all times unless there were a couple of times where there was some computer glitches that just didn't work but sure. under under five of those and William who's watching the show is in Kalamazoo Michigan who runs the um he's part of another um what is what's kind of, what are those channels when you're in the, the different towns and you have a um like oh, a cable ca access cable you know? access yes yeah, yeah. He's a cable access and he's helped me a lot oh there's my friend Laura so we're coast to coast right now Boston to California and everywhere in between Illinois, Michigan. William takes each of the shows and then posts them on YouTube. Okay, great. The show will be on YouTube soon. There's over 2,500 shows. That's amazing. That's really something. Yeah. So Fantastic. it's been a, a big community effort of my mom watches every show. Um, the, the, we call what who is here right now, Patty, William D. Um, Julie Luce would be watching it, but Julie is in the hospital, you guys, and she somehow lost her Facebook. M Rob Morocco's in Canada. His wife, Rob and Carol are in Canada. So there's, we call it the core group. And then there's always some people sure. that just stumble upon it. Sure. And now do you get, uh, you said you get back to St. Joseph once in, once in a blue moon, or do you have gigs lined up there? Do you, do you gig? in the Midwest anymore? Yeah, I'll, I'll gig there. Um, I have a, I have gigs out here right now. And then I have some gigs in New Orleans and New York in the next couple months. But um, yeah, I do a little bit there and Kalamazoo, but, Chicago, Indiana, Ohio, Illinois stuff. Need to go uh, to Wisconsin. We need to do a gig in Wisconsin. Well, that would be great. Yeah, I can, uh, I can help you get something around here. I know they have a couple of jazz clubs in Madison. Can't remember off the top of my head the names of those, but I can get those. But uh, do you, uh, so so 
uh, you line up your own gigs, I, I take it, or do you work with? Yeah, I don't have a booking oh. agent. I, I work, Rolf, uh, the guitar player that I work with when people go, which is Rolf, the guy with the beard. Yeah, he has the beard. Rolf is in New York and we do some stuff together. So we do a lot of East Coast and we've toured all over the country and, yeah. and Europe and Mexico. And then I work with some musicians out here. Next week or two weeks, I'm working with Paul McCandless, who's from or the band Oregon, if anyone okay. is familiar with that. I have a question for you. All right. Do you get back to South Bend? Uh, not not as often as I not as often as I would like to. My son still lives in South Bend. He's uh, um, he he works at a place called Lang Lab. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's a uh, it's a club. I think it's a nonprofit. I don't know much about it. They have bands. They have artists. They have poets. They have lots of, uh, lots of interesting things going on. That's in South. I want to do a gig there. Yeah. Well. Lang Lab. Cool. I, yeah. Yeah, my uh, he he books a lot of those groups. I don't know if he I don't know a lot of the, it's a big variety of entertainment they have there. But uh I don't get back to South Bend as much as I uh would like to. But now that the summer's coming uh, coming around, I think why don't you line can you get in on the Elkhart Jazz Festival again? Uh cuz I would love to go to that and it would give me an excuse a uh, better excuse to go back around that time. Can you get me into the Elkhart Jazz Festival? <laughs> well, I know Jim Catalano. I don't know how much uh, if he's on the committee or whatever, however they handle things. But uh, I, I think it's gotten smaller. You know, that's that's really... the thing after COVID, um, it so much changed in the music world, and oh, like sure. clubs, clubs closed, and new ones opened, and and producers retired, and mm -hmm. and a lot of festivals didn't happen and a lot of them didn't come back so that's 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 what's happening right now so back to back to the original wait, thing wait I, i'm sorry i'm interrupting you you ready to dance again okay are we back to 11 people <laughs> 11 people 11, 11. His shoes are dancing. <laughs> Tell us about those shoes, sir. I got these at St. Vinny's here in Baraboo for like seven bucks. And uh, cool. they're a U.S. Let's see. What are they? They're G&H Bass Company. I don't, I don't know shoes. Oh, bass. But yeah. I love bass. Oh, yeah. Bass are great. And I, I there's somebody in Baraboo. Who must have passed away recently? Who's exactly my shoe size, shirt size, <laughs> and pants size? Because I've had a lot of really good luck finding clothes there that are in really good shape. So I don't know. Do people just <laughs> show one pair of shoes, or can I show another pair of shoes? You now these shoes, do whatever you want. These are Merrill shoes. Ooh. Somebody told me those are a name in shoes, but. Uh, and they're, I think they're really cool looking. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but they're really cool. And I thought, oh, these are perfect. I put them on. They're the most uncomfortable shoe I've ever worn in my life. And again, these are, I bought them at St. Vinny's. So, you know, seven bucks, eight bucks or whatever it is, no big loss. And I'll probably just end up returning them eventually. I uh, don't say, and yet you still have them. I, yet I still have them. I know. I keep thinking if I were would wear them more often they'll get comfortable it yeah, just we, doesn't it doesn't work that way we think that all the time just yeah it doesn't <laughs> and then you remember one more one more pair of shoes if i if i may do you know you know something about shoes do you remember hush puppies i love hush puppies <gasps> see now i don't think they make hush puppies anymore i could be wrong about that but this is the closest thing I could find to Hush Puppies, and I love these shoes. But again, I need to put uh, like Dr. Scholl's supports in them because they're just not very supportive. But I love them just because they're they're 
soft and comfortable otherwise, but yeah. So that's it for the shoes. How did you start with, how did the shoe thing become a thing? Here, I'm going to play my audience sound effect. Yeah. There we go. I've got also this. Things get weird. Oh, we can't <laughs> hear them. You can't hear them? I think because you have your headphones on. See, oh, I maybe across, so. I run across that challenge. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I probably didn't send it through the right way. I don't know. I'm not are very. You, are you super technological? No, not so much. It's a lot of trial and error and then uh, frustration, anger, and then, you know, give up for a while and then try to get online and get some help somewhere. <laughs> so you know, what I find very useful, though, is YouTube, YouTube tutorials. I try. Yeah. I Sometimes. Just... I need a per I need the body, the person there and me doing it 10 to 17 times in a row. And then I kind of get it. Right. Yeah. I try the YouTube. They all oh, just Google it. Just YouTube it. I'm like, <laughs> right. can't just YouTube it. Not gonna yeah. just YouTube it. But I love doing this and I want to I want to continue it. It's not um a financial windfall in my life, but it's but people donate and um you know, all of a sudden I'll go, oh, wow, I have eleven dollars and eleven cents in my on my 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 uh, Patreon. I like developing the Patreon, which is really fun. Um, so what's the website? Is it just your name? Patreon? Oh, it's Tom? I have I have multiples. I'm going to have you. I want I want to have Do you record this sometime. But a generous gift is you want a professional voice offer announcer. Is that what you're saying? Jenna? Yeah. OK. Yes, uh, I, do. Uh, yes uh, I do. So I'll send you my agent's information. Do you do you do other voices? Oh, tell me about this other. Um, I'm sorry, I missed the thing that uh, one of my friends is the number one fan of. <laughs> Rodney the rodent. Rodney the rodent. Yeah, he's up there. You mentioned my wall before. These are all, I you know, when you're is in that television. Rodney in the corner. Rodney's up in the corner. Yeah, up there. I was going to ask. And uh, let me see if I can hang on a second. Let me see if I can get that down without falling. <laughs> hang on. Hang on a second. I love it. I, you guys, this is a great show to share. This is a All great right. example of a show to share. Share the show. Now, please. Let me get my headphones back on so I can hear you. Here we go. That's asking everybody to share the show because it's such a great show okay so that's that's me dressed as rodney a caricature done by eric walton uh now this is pretty good i think i mean there's some so rodney was a groundhog a guy a rat really that shows up on groundhog day every year at wndu and we started that a few years after i got there and uh, one of the executives said, oh, you know, we need, uh, Gordy, we think you should uh, come up with a character that's sort of a warm, fuzzy uh, character that the kids will like. And you can be uh, this warm, fuzzy thing around Groundhog Day. And I, I said, no, that's not going to happen. And they came back the next year. Same pitch. We really think we really would like you to do this for the kids. You know, and we'll get... Uh, more ratings, of course. So after the second year, we let it go again. And then they finally came back and I said, look, I'll do a character, but he's not going to be a warm, fuzzy character. He's going to be a rascal, you know, kind of like a Bugs Bunny, kind of a, you know, I want him to have some, some something to it. And so they said, sure, go ahead. Well, we didn't know that this thing was going to take off like it did. And it really did. And uh, we've had, we started having people show up every Groundhog Day at the station at, you know, the crack of dawn uh, to hear Rodney's Groundhog uh, prediction. We'd have, you know, a bunch of people out there applauding and waiting for him to come out. And it was a, it turned into a thing. And so now I still show up on Groundhog Day from, from this little studio that I have and do the character. So he sounds like, he sounds like I modeled him after Gilbert Godfrey. 
He was talking like this, you know, hey, hey, Trisha, anchor blonde, blonde anchor lady, that kind of thing. And he would give Trisha a lot of static and trouble about Groundhog Day. And it was a it was a fun bit. So people still ask about it. Um, I was never smart enough to, like, get the copyrights to this and make T-shirts or coffee mugs. But maybe it's not too late. I don't know. Do you wear a particular pair of shoes? <laughs> no shoes. For a long time, we had a complete costume. There used to be a costume rental store in South Bend, and I would show up every year, and they go, okay, here we go. And it was a full-dress costume. And then I, they would put me in this. It was almost like a sewer in the parking lot. It wasn't a sewer, but it was a cable collection place under the parking lot at WNDU. And they made a fake sewer cover out of wood because the real ones are super heavy and i would go actually go down in there before the show and it was of course really cold because groundhog day is like february 2nd so i'd be down there freezing in this stupid costume and there there was also some standing water <laughs> down there too so my feet would start you know i started getting like frostbite almost uh, before the big moment where the Groundhog Day would make his, or the Groundhog would make his prediction, Rodney would do that. So, uh, but people would like you guys that. Have to wait for the official Groundhog. <laughs> no, we like, Rodney. Oh God, we're getting the, we're getting the feed. We're getting the feed. <laughs> yeah, no, Rodney would uh, make his own prediction. He didn't care. He, in fact, he he made a point of not liking whatever Puxatani Phil was saying each time so usually he would go against whatever Puxatani Phil would say but uh yeah it was a fun bit it continues to be fun I I still do it uh they still ask for it so and I think they just show it online they don't they don't actually put it on TV too much or they might show a highlight later that night but uh yeah it was a fun bit well maybe you could be on February 2nd you can come on the show sure after don't don't take off the makeup and then jump on 11 11 because i'm not going anywhere there's no real makeup there's a snout and there's buck teeth and then there's there's ears that go on top and i, I was gonna I, I have it in the other room but yeah well we'll save that for the next time we'll tease that whenever the next time really want you to come back i knew before really we did it i was gonna say maybe he could he could be a regular on the show Listen, I'm, I'm You're giving me street cred, making me making this a lot easier for me and a lot more fun because sometimes I'm here alone. I get it. Times, I'll be just sitting here going, oh, and then I have these, you know, this here and I, on Friday nights. We do displaced and share. It's a show and tell. And, uh, you know, there's different. I go, I, I'm always fine. I'm like, what the hell am I? I got to find. Oh, I can do that. Wow. <laughs> You got a gong there and a glockenspiel and what what else yeah, you got? I do sound healing stuff for people. So I do, do you do voice lessons? You know, that's one of the things you were talking about, all these things that you do. Do you do you, you know how that guy wrote that book, Side Hustle? I've been side hustling since I was nine. You know? But that didn't answer my question. Do you do voice lessons? Yeah, I have a couple of yeah. people, a couple yeah. of clients. Yeah. And sometimes I work with kids that are in musicals and I have some adult clients, but a lot of that fell off during COVID. Because you you have such a wonderful voice, and did you did you train that voice, or was I mean, or did you just have it and started listening to stuff that you wanted to sing, and you were able to do that, or did you have voice training? I kind of just had it, and <laughs> I, have, I have a brother that I used to sing with. I from the time I was born. I yeah. listened to Nat King Cole and I listened to Herb Albert and Tijuana Brass as a kid. And and my and my family, my brothers and sister and I were the music in our church. Nice. So it's a family thing. We always were, I have a lot of extended family members on both sides of my, both my parents' sides that are musical. And I think about that. I think I want to do a record with my family. Like my, I have a yeah. cousin guitar player another cousin that plays bass and get them all together and but that's one of those dreams but I you know I, I teach a little bit all of my family sings my mom is here right now and she said all of your family sings my mom had a trio with her sisters wow 
my dad played accordion and organ and my brother Nino played guitar and sang and my sister played guitar and my other brother Mitch played guitar and sang. My brother Mitch now says he plays the telephone. When people <laughs> say, what, do you, what instrument do you play is the telephone. So it's, wow. it's, it's a thing. What about you? Is Maisie, is, are you musical? And Maisie, I want you to come be on the show and your ex-wife. Are there anybody else, any other family <laughs> members here? Um, well, you know, I've got my, my daughter, my son, who's over in South Bend. I don't think he would, he, he doesn't go on, he doesn't really use social media that much, you know? Um, good for him. Now, do you, do you still keep in touch with musicians in the Elkhart area or the South Bend area, yeah. St. Joe, Benton Harbor? She has stage fright. It's just you and me, Maisie. It's just the two of us. Nobody else is here. It's all good. Don't be afraid. And now we just, I talk about all kinds of things. <laughs> I, um, yes, I am good friends with um, David Jewell. You know David? Oh, sure. I worked with David okay. at WNDU. He did Middays on U93 uh -huh. for many years. David and I are good for David's sister, Lois, and I are very good friends. I don't know his sister, but I knew Dave quite well. Uh, and, when we worked in the same building. And yeah. through his wife, I was connected with a lot of friends. Sure. In that area. But um, my friend, um, Ricky Fields, who's an Elkhart person, you guys, Ricky was the one that, okay, you could be in your car singing karaoke. Yeah, Maisie's going to be on the show. Maisie, I had a show called Corona Roki. You can be on Corona Roki. <laughs> We're going to do another Corona Roki. You can be on the show. Ricky lives in Elkhart and he's a director of plays and I keep in touch with him. And there's a couple of musicians in Michigan. You know, I have a bluegrass band there. Oh, really? Band. Um, band. See, I had no idea you had any interest in bluegrass. I like to sing it. Yeah. I don't necessarily like to listen to a lot of it for very long. Yeah. Being honest, it's kind of loud, but, um, I like singing it and I let, and I work with incredible musicians in Michigan and a couple in Indiana. Now, you know, maybe, you know, do you know Dawn Burns? I think I do. Now she does a show on WVPE and I think it's on either Sunday nights or it's on Monday. It could be on Monday nights, but it's called the sauce. And I've heard it a couple of times and she interviews musicians and vocalists and folks in the music I bit. don't know Dawn that well, and I need to meet her. She she she's a really good singer, and uh, she played with, I think Terry and the Heartbeats around oh, South Bend, yeah. and um, a few other bands. Her brother is also he's a keyboard player. Uh, his first name escapes me. It'll Dawn come. Burns. I know. I I think I've met her or my brother because I know Danny Lerman. Oh sure, I know Danny a little Danny. bit. And Had him on Experience Michigan a bunch of times. Yeah. yeah was only on once. <laughs> I'm sorry, we only had you on once and we didn't have you sing either. That's the, it, I had very little control of that show. I mean, uh, as much as I enjoyed doing it, it was really, uh, it was a struggle because to get guests because we taped all you know, during the day, during the afternoon, there was no, we wanted to, originally the idea was to do the show live every evening and that never was able to happen. So then everything started changing. We ended, I mean, it was a good show, but uh, it was really tough to do music. Uh, it was, you know, tough to set it up and it took time to get the studio set and everything. And, and we had a really limited budget, but uh, you know, I wish we would have had you on to sing. That's okay. That's why I have my own show because I can sing here and I can yeah. invite you to perform on my show because you could perform right here one on one. But I also have a show called Corona Roki International Limited, where I have musicians come from all over the world and they perform on the show on Zoom. When is that? Is that a Patreon thing? Where uh, it's where here on eleven eleven. It's it was on Thursday nights. We used to do it. We did it. I don't know, William, how many Corona Rokies we have, but quite a few. And they started out with me doing it with like this. Okay, here's here's such and such. Let me cue you up to my iPad and let me hold this microphone in your face. And <laughs> yeah, but 
I have, but I need to do, people have asked the other day that I miss Corona Roki. When are you going to have Corona Roki again? I go, okay, we'll have a Corona Roki. But it's getting 10, 12 musicians together. And, and for, you know, two and a half years, nobody was working. So now people are working, but. So do the musicians just take turns playing a song or do you try to sync it? You can't sync it all up here on Zoom, can you? No, I, they, they sing one at a time. Okay. I, I'm learning about this new program called Jam Kazam. Yeah. Do you do it? Do you know how to do no, it? No, there, there are several like that. And I've not done it. I have a musician friend here who just loves it. I've not done it though. I don't know how. Uh, you need some kind of plug-in and I don't know how to yeah. do it. So I just looked up Don Burns music and cool, who comes up on Don Burns. Cool Runnings Restaurant and Bars, proud to present saxophonist composer Danny Lerman. There you go. Record. So Danny is is featured on her page right now. And, and the name of her show is The Sauce. The Sauce. B -P -E, the Sauce. And Live I at 7, 7 p.m. Eastern tonight, March 13th. Oh, that was a few days ago. Shiny, shiny, black, and Marcus Roots were her guests okay. so i just liked her she has a profession she has a i don't have her personal page but i just liked her page well i'm in touch with her a little bit i i i'm gonna recommend that she get you on her show and then you can get her on your show and you know that's how it all works it's all about all get a connection kumbaya you know my, my friend says he knows the band terry and the pirates it was terry and the heartbeats at least when i was living around South Bend. They played at the Midway Tavern a lot. Yeah, it was a great place. That was a really Midway. great venue. venue. Saw some classic shows at the Midway. Yeah. But then I moved and I missed out on a lot of things that happened in those years that when people say, oh, do you know this musician? I was gone. I moved to the Bay Area and then I was in New York and I kind of, I'd come home for just enough time to learn the, uh, to hear some gossip and then it was time to leave town again i'd be like out of here so wow so yeah see how fast almost an hour goes by you know you read my mind you know, or you saw me looking at my watch and the clock over here i'm like we've been talking for almost an hour is that yeah. possible yeah it's it's fun it's it fun. is fun i i would love to come back again sometime so right. whenever, when? whenever you no, <laughs> what's that i when? miss when Any, anytime you want oh i don't know william don't. says there are 35 corona rookies so we've had 35 <laughs> william sounds like your your shadow producer <laughs> keeping track of everything he does he keeps track Good. of every single show and yeah and and other people remind me of this and that and yeah it's it's been a community effort for sure you need to do a podcast i, I think don't, I don't know how. Yeah, well, you do this. This is all you got to do is record this and then throw it out there on the, in the podcast. Edit world. It and stuff? Hell no. Okay. You don't need to edit it. Uh, I think it's better unedited. It's uh, more live. I'll do a podcast. I've been wanting to. I need to get the right microphone and the, oh, you know. Don't stuff. let that stop you. You can get a regular, you can get a SM58, sure, mic. Okay, you're you don't need a microphone then. That'll work just fine. There's a little attachment you need with your computer that's going to cost like a hundred bucks. I mean, not like a, but like, I don't a even digital know. a digital interface. It just plugs goes from your mic in between your mic and into your computer. That's it. That's it. Just and the volume a little bit. A podcast thing. Can we talk about this? We can talk about it. Okay. I mean, we're talking about it now, but yeah, yes. I know it's late for you and I don't want to, you know, I, I just so I, you know, on Thursday, I did a show and it was almost, I think it was 13 hours this year, this, this time. So 13 hours. What do you mean? It was 13 hours. I, well, it was three years. My oh. celebration party, I started at eight eleven in the morning and I took a break at 3 PM until about four. And then it wasn't that really that time was something. And then I started up again and went till about, I don't know, something. Yeah, it was kind of long. Well, oh, it's 11-11 in Baraboo. Hey, it's 11-11 in Baraboo right now. It is, exactly. Here we go again. Yeah. 
Cheers. Do you get it? Cheers. Cheers. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. This has been fun, Jenna. Keep in touch. Okay. All right. Sure. Thank you. Gordy Young, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Sleep tight. Sweet dreams. Love y'all. And love hard. Bye-bye.